this demonstration will look at configuring DHCP failover. The purpose of this is if we do get a DHCP failure, we lose the ability to hand out valid IP addresses on our network. So by having two DHCP servers, either as a standby server or load balancing, this will give us additional functionality and business continuity on the network. I've come onto my secondary DHCP server, which is currently configured as just a DHCP server. So we'll just go to Tools and DHCP. What we can see at this point here is that we can see we have no scopes currently configured on this server. So we'll pull this across, span this up, no scopes as of yet. Next thing we'll do is we'll just move over to our primary DHCP server and have a look at the scope that we currently have in place that we then want to configure for failover. On the server, if we just expand up DHCP, what we can see under IP version 4 is we can see that we actually have a scope configured for 172.16.0.0. Now what we want to do is set up failover for this scope, so we'll right click on IP version 4, come down to configure failover, that'll bring us into a wizard. We want to do it for the scope that is available on this server and select next. Then what we need to do is add a server, so all we'll do at this point here is enter the IP address of our additional server and just add the server. Then what we'll do is we'll just specify the two authorised servers and select OK. And then the wizard all we need to do is give the relationship a name so I'm just going to call this a datum. Then what we're going to do for the maximum client lead time is we're just going to specify this as 15 minutes. The purpose behind this is what the actual setting does is it's just there to determine the amount of time a DHCP server should wait when the partner is unavailable before assuming control of the address range. The value can be zero and the default as we saw there was one hour. We've got two modes for failover. We've got load balance which as its name suggests does load balancing between the two DHCP servers or we can specify hot standby. So this is where the passive server will take over if the active one fails. We'll stick with load balance. I'm happy with the 50-50 split. Next thing we have here is our state switchover interval. So we'll just turn on tick box. We'll leave that at 60 minutes. And the purpose of all of this is it just enables automatic transition to a partner down state. And this is just in the case of a failure. We'll then come to enable message authentication. And all we're going to do at this point here is specify a shared password or a shared key that we can use to just authenticate through the two servers. So we'll select next. Select finish. Hope that everything comes up successful. So we'll select close. Then what we'll do is we now have our failover partnership in place. So we'll now move over to our secondary server and just make sure that we do now have the 172.16.0.0 scope in place. So what we'll do on the secondary server is just go to tools and what we'll do is we'll come down to DHCP and what we're looking for here is once we launch up the console we're looking for IP version 4 and we're looking for the scope in place. So we can see that replication has occurred. We now have the scope in place on both servers. Both servers will now load balance between each other. And that's the end of this demonstration.